What's up guys? Uh, so I'm going to talk about memory a little bit um, and a cool new discovery out of UC Irvine that involves um, the anatomy of memory. So for a while now, I guess 50 years or something, we've realized that memory is really this anatomical process. It's a biological thing. It's not this abstract concept where, you know, there's this bank of memory somewhere in the universe for each person. It's specifically in the brain and specifically molecular for any organism that can remember. So it was first realized with fish, actually, and then certain researchers, I think at NYU, pieced together that it's really this anatomical thing. Um, so memory is a problem for a lot of older people. I'm sure a couple of you know from experience. Um, and it, this new study out of UC Irvine shows that the reason older people have trouble forming new memories is because there's a certain enzyme that kind of puts the halt on this protein. It's called protein one and the enzyme that is specifically stopping it is called HDAC3. So if you kind of lift HDAC3 and stop it from putting the brakes on protein one, which helps form memories, then hey, <laughs> Older people can form new memory. So of course we know that there are two types of memory. There's kind of short-term memory, like right now, for example, this video would be an example of learning something short-term and long-term memory. Hopefully you remember this video. <laughs> and other things with long-term memory are like putting on shoes or like, you know, remembering calculus. If you can do that, I can't. Um, but this is important because it helps create new memories and achieve them to a kind of longer lasting state. And of course, this brings up a lot of discussions like, should we make our memories better? You know, do we want to have super perfect memories? Do we want a super perfect web of memories? Like, I don't know if you guys saw that Black Mirror episode. There's this one Black Mirror episode where there's, there's this guy, right? And all his memories are like on a TV and he can just sift through all of his memories, etc memories of other people, and it gets kind of crazy, to say the least. <laughs> so there's this kind of tricky avenue with how perfect do we want our memories to be? What do we do with memory? Of course, you know, it's a cognitive function, and it's extremely important to live, to survive. Without memory, you know, we wouldn't know anything, really. It's one of the most remarkable things ever. But how much do we want to perfect it. How much do we want to use it? How much do we want to change our own natural chemistry for memories to promote ourselves? So of course with people with impaired memories, um, it can be beneficial. It can be super revitalizing. You know, they kind of get their life back if they have their memory. If you don't have your memory, then life is just this one continuous stream of something, whatever it is, and you don't really remember anything. But if you do have your memory, then you can function as a human being. But do we want really good memories where we can, you know, remember anything and everything? Like there are certain kids, there's this one kid that can tell him any date, May 4th, 2013, he will tell you exactly what happened on that date to the dot. Do we want those kinds of memories? Um, you know, put your thoughts down. I want to hear what you have to say in regards to memory. Should we make our memories perfect? Should we only help people that don't have good memories? If you have any other thoughts regarding this, please let me know. I think it's a very important study, not only improving the anatomical understanding of memory, but you know, it's kind of getting closer to what do we do with memory? How do we make it better? How much should we improve it? And what exactly are we going for with this kind of neuroscience. So put your thoughts down. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you next time.